Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Giluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer, dear listener, my name is Mumpuli Kiluruma Mohobe. I'm coming to you yet, with, yet again with another powerful, insightful episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. I do trust uh, you'll love this one. My guest is Mr. Gabriel uh, Mutibedi of uh, Nako Time Pieces. And my hope is that he will, um, uh, he will dazzle you as much as he's dazzled me as we're preparing for this, uh, for this, uh, for this particular interview. Uh, welcome. Can you introduce yourself with g in greater length, sir? Yeah, no, thanks a lot, Pre uh, Mokobe. Uh, it's such an honor to actually be a part of uh, the Mokobe Nuggets uh, of uh, Wisdom podcast. Mm -hmm. And my name is Gabriel Mutsidisi uh, Mutibedi. I'm actually uh, the founder, managing director, and chief designer and engineer at uh, Nako Time Pieces. Okay. Yeah, um, Tell us a bit about the academic side, background, the vocational side. Um, I'm actually um, three quarters um, through my doctoral studies in design innovation policy. And then I started my bachelor's degree in 2003 in the University of Botswana, where I studied uh, industrial design, which is basically consumer product design, mm -hmm. product uh, engineering five-year program where you go through BSc, general engineering, and then you go into now um, uh, design uh, engineering of the actual products. Um, mm -hmm. Afterwards, I then joined UB as a uh, staff development fellow, um, and then I later went and started um, <coughs> my master's in communications design. That was more to do with strategy, to do with innovation studies, to do with applied um, creativity and uh, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's when I went and studied that in the United States in a school called Platt in, in, in New York. Um, afterwards, came back. Platt, you said? Platt, P-R-A-T-T. Okay, Platt. Yes, okay. Yeah. And then I started my doctoral studies in 2018. So basically, if you look at my um, ac 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 academic journey, I was trying to, it, it's pretty much in the same domain. Mm -hmm. design, but I was trying to cut across three macro um, um, levels of, 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 of operations, which is uh, technical design, where, you know, we I got the skills and got equipped with the skills of making the actual product in my undergrad. Mm -hmm. I moved into design management and now into what we call design leadership, mm -hmm. because it has to do more with uh, decision making, with policy. Uh, for design and about design. Okay. When do we start calling you Dr. Mutibet? Well, um, soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, soon. Um, it, it, it should happen um, very soon because, like I said, it's been, I mean, I'm 85% throughout mm -hmm. uh, comp uh, completion and uh, not much has been left. It's just to prune bits and pieces okay. and to align and then submit. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about Nakotam pieces. Yeah. How did the concept come about? Basically, um, well, what I'd like to state is that at this point in time, there's only one sole director in Nako Time Pieces, but there were two founding directors at the time in 2018. It was I and uh, Dr. Shima Tirafalo uh, Tlogili, who recently uh, just left the company. And then what had happened was he, he was a collector of watches he grew up just liking watches and then he was just uh, that guy who with accessories you know mm. and then now i came in as the guy that that puts it you know puts things together i was now the engineer i would build your brands i'll build products from scratch through conceptualization to computer-aided design 
uh, to making rapid prototypes. Mm -hmm. So when we met, it was like, you know what? I think we are two special people with different skill sets. Let me look at the design innovation part of it, product development part of it, and then you can focus on the business side of it because I was based in London at the time. Mm -hmm. So he was in Botswana and then we joined hands, you know, put together our little um, savings mm -hmm. to, to, to start the company. That's how the company started, but really there was also a need, you know what I mean? So we felt Botswana really has a very rich visual vocabulary. Mm -hmm. You know, Botswana's heritage is, is, is really rich and the country is rich in culture. Mm -hmm. As much as people uh, share information in, in, in journals and books, we were like, let's try to share our heritage in a rather different way. And then we did that on time pieces because now these are canvases on which we paint perfect pictures of Botswana. Wow. Yeah. Value added to natural resources, diamonds, that's yeah. the, the cornerstone of this. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more in terms of mm. the design thinking aspect? Yeah. I mean, for me personally, uh, Botswana has been producing diamonds and has been the best country uh, by far, by value, uh, up to date, which um, is what I think. And, you know, to me that should mean and say something to every Jack and Jill in Botswana. Mm. Now that your country uh, has these natural resources, when mm. I you know what I mean? In your little corner, in your little space, what can you do for your mm. country and add value to these natural resources? So we're like, you know what? Um, part of it, we got into watchmaking because these are accessories. And at the same time, we're trying to enhance and to sort of uh, play a part in trying to define Botswana's jewelry design industry itself. Because you see, you have the stones, you have the diamonds, you have the raw materials, but it's through jewelry design that you'd add value to these natural resources. So watchmaking became, you know, like a part of like, okay, this is where we are going to go. And it's very possible to put stones in, in watches we've tried to some of them uh, i don't know if any of them are here yeah. do you have actual diamonds in it no no those ones are not here because that was for uh, a client i think, I think we'd be a target for, <laughs> for for something not so uh yeah yeah i mean you, you don't want to be wearing a diamond but you have made diamond encrusted uh, watches yeah i mean we have clients not only in botswana but because mm -hmm. what happens is we design our own products isn't mm -hmm. and also we design bespoke products for corporate clients and for just clients here in the world. But that if you have the money and then you want, like, uh, say, a, a watch worth 32 diamonds of carrots of your choice, mm. you know what? We mm. sit down and do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Cowhide, still yeah. from, a, from a raw material standpoint, what do you have to tell us about that? How, how, what role does it play in your design scheme? It's, it, it goes back to culture and tradition, mm -hmm. of which uh, and then basically if uh, agriculture, especially farming, cattle is a bigger part of uh, society yeah, from time immemorial, obviously there needs to be some type of industry built around that and value added, not only through BMC and meat, Mm -hmm. but byproducts as well because there's cowhide and then how do we process cowhide and make sure that we get other products out of home you know these leather straps um, are products of, of for instance of this one yeah it's original from Botswana the, we, 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 we get our cowhide from Europe and then the plan is to actually get it from Botswana because mm. um, if I remember well there was a leather park in Lubate that mm. was being set up and then we've been in talks with the government and we never really uh, got to, um, you know, come to any solution because I think it's an ongoing project. Mm. Um, some government officials directed us to, to Lea where you have um, people who work with leather. And then now there, uh, I'd like to sort of um, clarify something. We have met people, but the quality of the leather products and the leather steps that they were making we're not matching what we wanted. Because mm. at the end of the day, we don't have to get leather just because it's all one. Mm. We have to get good quality leather. And when we put it next to leather from Europe, 
we, we go with the best, you know what I mean? Yes, we live in yes, a global because village, you, it's a luxury thing. product. Uh, after all. And then the point that I wanted to clarify was we are into consumer product design. Mm-hmm. And there's a thin line between a design and a craft. A lot of times you find here back home, there's a lot of craftsmen. Mm-hmm. And then people, uh, you know, like making crafts instead mm-hmm. of designs. Go it's a topic of another day, but the the the, the, the two differ. Okay. In, in in terms of precision and minimalism and processes and stuff like that. So because we still have mm-hmm. we don't have craftspersons who can design mm-hmm. the type of leather that's suitable for this quality watch. Yes, we mm-hmm. we we for for the ones that we uh, spoke to. We are not happy with 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 yeah. with with, with uh, what the quality. Let's talk about the watches themselves, yeah. Nak or time pieces. Mm. What inspired mm. you to come up with this, and and how was the design process for you to end up with this beautiful watch? And Product, I, yeah. you know, th- these are these are beautiful products. Yeah. And I've seen even HE um, uh, wearing some of these watches or promoting them. Yes. Mm. I would say um, first things first. Let's start with the brand itself because there are two things there. We have the brand and we have the products. Mm-hmm. So as far as the brand is concerned, we named it Nako not because of the ticking mm-hmm. ends of time, but you see, time defines life. Mm-hmm. These moments in time, you know, there was a time that you were born, there's a time you got married, there's a time you had your first son, and all these accumulated, uh, you know, life. define what life is, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And time is a very important, uh, you know, aspect of life. And we're like, you know what? Let's just do something that really celebrates the days and times of the people. And mm-hmm. that is why people are also a part of what we do. So we named our brand Nagwa in, 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 in that context mm-hmm. and bringing people uh, at the center stage. And then Heritage also became a part of it because mm-hmm. they cannot be Nagwa without mm-hmm. Heritage. And is there a uniqueness that you added in terms of the design? One would say that you know, watches have been around a long time. What is the uniqueness that you brought in? Yeah, what happens is, um, so normally what happens in, in design and manufacturing of products, mm. we have what we call archetypes. Yeah. Um, I'll give you an example with, 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 uh, with the you know, automotive industry. Um, well, there's you know, like different theories on 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 who made the first car but henry ford was um very story was very popular with the t1 mm. you know what i mean some say he just housed what was there and stuff like that yeah. but whatever it was the t1 was uh, something that was rather uh, popular mm. and um I, I i would say you see what he did with the um, t1 became became an archetype mm. that defines a car mm. so what a car is without rai chassis with mm. four wheels on the side yes. and then you mount an engine on the top whether it's an audi mercedes benz what so basically a car is one thing mm-hmm. they're all the same you know what i mean yes. so basically what there's an architect there's a certain there's a standard type of design alone you have to follow to say this is a car mm. even in watchmaking every product that's every product is like that there are certain specifications say long worry the product has to have to 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 be defined or identified as a watch you understand yes and then obviously what then belongs to you is the nuances Mm -hmm. of the aesthetics yes because first things first we adopt um movements depending on what we what you know like the 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 type of watch that we want to make Mm. either we get our um, movements from japan sometimes Seiko, sometimes uh, Citizen, Mayota, mm. or the Swiss made ones, yes. depending on the type of watch that we want to make. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Mm-hmm. So in terms of the movements themselves, we adopt them. Mm-hmm. Isn't the Mercedes-Benz also will adopt Dunlop and Firestone? Yes, they don't yes. make tires. Yeah. No. So basically, that's just the language in, in consumer product design all over the world. Yes. They, they run uh, you know, BMW cars, maybe in Bosch filters. Yes. You can't make everything. Mm-hmm. So we adopt the movements. And then what we then do is actually the design mm-hmm. of the dial itself, the design of the hands, the design of the casing, and and and, and the bezel at some point. Okay. It, all, it has to uh, be uh, different in any way. So basically, that's what then makes the product uh, unique. Mm-hmm. And then what we have as products are actually registered as industrial designs. Mm-hmm. Even if meaning, you meaning the patents are registered. 
No, the patents will rather be with the movements than the patents belong to the people who mm. make the movements. I get when say Mayota, and then Rona basically it's on the what we register is the industrial design. The Could industrial the design, mm-hmm. no, the, industrial the actual design itself. Uh, yeah, that what you see. Okay. Yeah, that visual design is registered as an it's industrial. It's an IP, as IP to industrial design. Yes, it's called an industrial design. Okay. So we register um, an industrial design, on the, we submit sketches like again, yes. blueprints and the metamorphosis of mm-hmm. product development. Yes. Until uh, CAD models and rapid prototypes and mockups to show that indeed this belongs to us mm-hmm. and we did it. So basically, even if you remove the Nako logo, the watch is a Nako watch. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? If you remove a Toyota sign from the car, that's mm-hmm. a Toyota car. Yes, yes. It really is not about the symbol, yeah. but the product itself. So that's what we're doing at Nako okay. because we own the industrial designs. Okay. Yeah. You brought a few um, watches. Can you just explain the differences? Which one is this? What is? Yeah. Take us through the products itself. So basically what we started with, we started with the classics. The classics are similar to what I'm wearing. Mm-hmm. And then um, you can see that uh, it's actually uh, thicker. Mm. This is the uh, same watch, different um, strap. Mm. And then those are classics for mm-hmm. for women. Just take it out and let's see what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. even even this one. Mm. Yeah. So basically this is the... Um, this is the... Um, it's a um, it's a classic. This is this is one of the our first watches mm. that we started with, and if you look at the functions, we have the um, seconds, minute, and hour hand. Afterwards, you have your day and date. Mm-hmm. You know now these are additional uh, parts or, 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 or movements within within the the, the mechanism. Mm. So what we then did, and then this watch costs when we started, it costs. Um, 3,000 pula. Mm-hmm. And later we made it um, 2.7. It mm-hmm. uses a citizen Mayota movement. Mm-hmm. It will kick for a good five generations. Wow. Not even 50 years. Five generations of people because the culture. Eddie 30 watches. times five. 150 years. Yeah. You have to pass it on mm-hmm. to the people. Call your son and your grandson. Mm-hmm. Even if you engrave your initials. Well, that now changes the leather straps or battery after a couple wow. of years. Wow. And stuff wow. like that. But mm-hmm. it's a very durable product. What What's is it this? called? Um, this is the classic. It's just called classic. Okay. Nako time pieces, 3 de Hossi edition. It's a 3 de Hossi edition. Yes. Classic. Yes. And then we have 10 ATMs water resistant. Okay. And our, the water resistant uh, okay. is actually quite high. And then now because these ones um, were at 3,000 for, for men and 2.5 for women, mm. um, you know, we had uh, like a demographic profile that couldn't afford mm-hmm. you know what i mean some people couldn't afford the watch culture like i said is not as big in Botswana. part of what we're doing is to cultivate yes, uh, that to culture the market. Uh, yeah mm. over time uh mm. we'll get there and then some people do have the money but hella they wouldn't part with 3k for a watch, watch you yeah. know what i mean so mm. there were different factors and we're like you know what um, we need um, a 3D Kosi edition, but, but, but rather affordable version. Mm-hmm. That's when the slim line came. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So the slim line basically is pretty much have the same It doesn't one. have the date. It doesn't have the date. It doesn't have the day. Mm. It doesn't have the seconds hand. Mm. So it only has two hands, the minute mm. and the hour. So what does that mean? It means how we have removed three mechanisms in the in the movement, like mm, mm. making uh, to make it affordable, cheaper. and then uh, we made it thinner, mm-hmm. meaning less material consumption. Yes. Basically, this is what we do in product engineering. It means our product optimization. Mm-hmm. It's an optimization process because you see, when you design, you can sketch everything out of this world. Yes, you can do all types of wonders in the computer. But now there's going to be a negotiation between the designer and the manufacturing engineer. Mm. What type of technology is available, technical know-how, mm. and machinery. You know what I mean? So you get on an um, iterative process of negotiating and changing mm-hmm. to be uh, able to, to manufacture a product. And that process, obviously, it's specific to, to every, every plant. If we Tell change us about these other ones. They look yeah. different. Yeah, basically those those are the classics for mm. women. It's the same Let's watch. One there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically, this is the um, classic Marula retro. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 the same watch, pretty much, mm. as this one. 
but kiaba sad it's yes. for women and then it's not really like your smallest size mm-hmm. it's a boyfriend's watch yeah, yeah. yeah. you know mm-hmm. what i mean and thick as well and mm-hmm. this was our best selling mm-hmm. basically in in the first um um edition these are the ones that we started with mm-hmm. uh 2016, 2017 2018 2018 I'm to 2018 25th october yes so these are the ones that we started with mm-hmm. um what i heard afterwards we then went slimline i guess mm-hmm. uh, slimline it was more to keep the durability same durability but to make something that's rather affordable mm-hmm. that is where now the slimline came yeah. in so this is basically the female version of this okay for one now we just had the blue straps and then this one we had the red and the purple yeah and these are the ones that really 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 sold there are two types actually they sell in botswana or in europe everywhere in the world basically so we have this mm-hmm. uh as the ruby red yes and then we have the white on red and the red on red okay and it's one and then these ones are 1.5 okay a very durable watch still quads mechanical um movement so where is, the, where is your your customer base at the moment um you know since we have a corporate division we get a lot of corporate orders corporate orders of the products that exist mm-hmm. corporate orders of bespoke watches where we design you know watches for certain corporation with the specs that they want Mm -hmm. so that's where you know like we make most of our money Mm -hmm. afterwards we have um botswana in botswana Mm -hmm. we have botswana and africans in the diaspora Mm -hmm. and the reason why we managed to penetrate like i said when we started i get in when we started i was based in london Yes. So we had an office in London at the time. Yes. And then before London, name, I was based in New York. So we have an office with a partner, the mm-hmm. who's, yeah. who's citizen mm-hmm. um, of the United States. Mm-hmm. So over our my business partner was here, and there was mm-hmm. another guy. You have physical yeah. retail stores and outlets? No, no, not retail stores, but offices. Mm-hmm. So basically, Harare, when we Cause launch, because you sell directly to the customer. Yeah, because whatever we do every whether it's messages or papers whatever happens in Botswana is there in South Africa it's there in London and because the London office uh, you know took care of the European uh, market mm. the New York office was more like the American market and then Botswana and South Africa was more like your uh, African mm. in terms of retail you know we didn't want to go into retail because that we start the value chain from the very beginning from thought mm-hmm. to ideation to conceptualization to rapid prototyping and mocking up mm-hmm. and 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 the one thing that i'd like to to highlight is that we came into business not from a business and business development perspective but from an engineer's perspective mm-hmm. we all get into business from different perspectives Angles, you know yes. what i mean yes. so now we are makers of the products we are the guys that make stuff you know what i mean and then that's where we wanted to focus and concentrate on and then we're like you know what we have outlets we have big malls and then we even have local people Botswana by now they have um local stores why not sell with them mm-hmm. so obviously or either or we place our products with them and then um mm-hmm. or, yes. so where are you distributing in Botswana so Botswana it's mostly the three if not four ways I got we have Monsieur collections in Apple Junction. We yes. have white label fragrances in Revolk. Mm-hmm. At least these are two major malls. Mm-hmm. And then we sell from the warehouse where mm-hmm. people just call us directly. And our online store on is under development. It should be up mm-hmm. where people from here and outside would buy. But you know, buying from I mean online purchases and stuff in Botswana is not as popular. As you know what I mean? Yeah. People want to go into the mall that you know physical experience and touch and mm. touch the product so we have that and we're like because we start the value chain from the very mm. beginning we don't really have to mm. go to to to, to read we can but we chose not to mm. yeah now let's talk about the the manufacturing process itself yeah uh, your, your your factory if i am correct yeah is based in europe in tell in us yeah. uh, germany in, in geneva geneva yeah. Yeah, Switzerland, yeah tell us what what considerations came into play and why you don't have mm. a manufacturing uh, plant in Botswana. A plant in Botswana, yes. Mm. Okay, here's the thing. First things first, um, let's understand that design and engineering are two different things. 
architecture and construction are two different things. Yes. So an architect is a space designer. And Mary and Roberts, those are engineers who erect structures. These, these structures. You know mm. what I mean? But mm. these people work hand in hand. Mm. So basically, from a, from if you understand that process, yeah. you would know what a product designer does versus a manufacturing engineer. So whatever you go through um, product development, conceptualizing like with your sketches mm. uh, I would come up with say 800 sketches by hand wow. when I develop one product that's and a lot uh, yeah that's a lot and then from there what if you want the best design and if you want to be a good designer stay away from the computer mm. use your hand afterwards you digitize whatever you've chosen and then CAD modeling is the we move into CAD surface modeling and solid modeling of the products, which is you're in a computer aided design, mm. and then how does how do what we call a general assembly drawing? General assembly drawing, it's what I have plan and do. I want to plan and do, and then the symbols, mm. just like a so house plan. Hey, go to when an architect has made a plan with pages, with all the views, orthographic projections, and then with symbols. Lahaka mm. onela anyone in Asia mm. or anywhere they would understand the engineering language. So little now we have the same thing. So we have all of these after that with the rapid prototypes and mock-ups. So we do rapid prototypes and mock-ups with 3D printers. We take everything and then send to to Geneva. And in, then in a box? 3D printers? Mm. Okay, you just courier them there. Or something. Because wh- wh- what you need when you send a product for manufacturing, you have to have a complete portfolio. I create your sketches, is your dimensions, material science, you know, what type of screw do you want, what type of um, crown do you want, this steel in there, what type of steel, the measurement, the type of glass, is it hardened, is it crystal, you know, how do you want your leather to be processed and stuff like that. I mean, that's what we do in engineering school. Mm. Ally, part of it is chemistry, really making glass, yes, making stainless steel from iron and stuff like that, calculating what type of you know, amounts of oxygen wow. to put and stuff like that. Mm. So we actually do all of that, mm-hmm. you know, and then all these specifications in the product portfolio did not be. And then when you hand to the manufacturing engineer, last is a mm. uh, they'll be in a position to do it for you because there are symbols mm. and language in product engineering that we both understand. Mm-hmm. But like I was saying, there's going to be an iterative process because um, so see the reeling or the design, it, it will depend on certain conditions mm-hmm. or do they have sufficient mm-hmm. technology, the type of machinery. Some yeah, people I was gonna ask you, you how you I mean? picked the engineer, the, the actual manufacturer. Mm. How do you how do you pick the process of deciding who to go to? It's uh you know, I've I've been designing products all over the world for as far back as about two thousand and three. Mm-hmm. So, um, more when it comes from affiliation, several world design organization, which I'm a part of. I've been a part of that for years. I've been a part of like your same thing in Africa, and uh, basically, it's it's it, that's just my world. Yes, yes. Now, also, how I want to have the now chief design officer of Mercedes Benz that makes these Mercedes Benz cars. That's a friend of mine. That's mm. a good friend of mine. Mm. The same. Because you operate in the same space. Yeah, he's now based in Germany. He's like the CDO. He's the chief design officer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Mercedes-Benz. That's the guy that makes the Mercedes-Benz cars. Yes. So those are people that I've known for as back as about twenty years ago, mm. before I'm in positioning here. Uh, Bonobo Johnny Ivy. Mm-hmm. Actually, he's back now in the UK. Johnny Ivy kind of was chief design officer of Apple. Okay, known under these products. Mm-hmm. Those are people that I know personally from conferences. Mm-hmm. From they will come to our schools. Mm. Like I was trained in the United States. I was trained also in mm-hmm. in, in the UK. So it's it's more it's it's, it's um, more like networks. Yeah, and and again, like I said, for for for, for really all my life, I've been in this domain, mm-hmm. and I know almost everyone. I know people from Toyota. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. I know the guys at Sony. So it wasn't difficult to choose <coughs> Geneva. Because I knew where to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know who to go to go Sony. Mm-hmm. I know who to go to go Philips Design. I know who okay. to go to go. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 obviously even through education. Are these are case studies that you study? Mm. You study renowned designers. 
you study you there's know. a tendency or an expectation that for something to be manufactured mm. well mm. if you're a Motswana it has to be home where you have greater control but from what I'm understanding you don't have to be physically present to have control yeah first things first like I said um, you one you can't design and manufacture everything even the products that we have from cars to everything strip a car out yeah. you know what I mean you can't do everything mm. so how are you are designing a car or something specific you understand what I mean mm. and then from there I mean we all want expertise if you look at Switzerland and watchmaking I mean these guys have been doing this for hundreds of years and obviously Hilo Rona we're coming from a design engineering uh, perspective we wanted to work with the best and obviously for some time but hell the plan is to, mm. to 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 get our raw materials from Botswana mm. and move assembly lines to Botswana at least to empower mm. Botswana uh, and then drive and enhance industrial development uh, yeah. through watchmaking in our homeland but hell that you know the way things are it works for us because you know Everything is of scale. And, and everything is seamless, really. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But mm-hmm. tried to print a mark in driving our country's uh, industrial mm-hmm. development through um, watchmaking. But if you ask us, bro, but I'm sure you do you do have uh, mm-hmm. interns and attaches and mm-hmm. you know apprentices who are Botswana who are part of this process, correct? Yeah, because um when I joined UB twenty ten. So it's been over 10 years teaching go, go UB. It's been over 10 years teaching in U- United States universities and um, European universities, especially the UK has been about four now. Mm. So I have people I've taught in all these places. Mm. So uh, that will be automatically, they just become my mentees. Mm. You know, we're always in the loop. Mm. You know, they pass their projects by me. You know what I mean? They set up that mm-hmm. little things. And when I want to work, they don't have to come here. We work remotely. I agree. It's the time of the Internet of Things. Yeah. And the fourth IR. Yeah, yes, yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a buzz thing. And some of them end up working for the company. Yeah. What I like, I like to empower people. Even if you have your little setup there, go hurry, don't come, go here. No, mm. no, no. Let's just offer it as a third party. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Brand Nakua's objective is to commemorate and celebrate uh, the significance of the three chiefs. You've already mentioned that. Yeah. Things like Botabelo, Bukhaka. Can yeah. you just speak to that and why the three chiefs are central mm. to some of your design efforts, especially mm. one of your biggest products? Yeah. Mm. I think, um, like I was saying, um, every company has a brand philosophy. Um, I'll give you an example of Mercedes Benz, their brand philosophy, essential purity. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes. But that does translate to the products that they make mm-hmm. because they don't make cars. They design experiences that uh, are connected to essential purity as a brand philosophy. Yes. So, Kohorona, we are merging heritage and horology. So, and that is modern horology and Botswana's heritage. Chronology. No, no, horology, the, the science and art of making watches. Yes, horology, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. So basically, our brand philosophy, mm. we were trying to match uh, modern horology with uh, Botswana's heritage. Mm-hmm. Like I was saying, Jorge, um, basically, how really watch you are wearing uh, Botswana's history and heritage on the wrist. These are canvases on which we paint pictures of Botswana. We tell our stories through watches, basically. And then these stories are about people. And we were like, okay, let's start with a very important story or a story Elon holds, um, you know, like more water. And then we looked at the three chiefs. As controversial as it is, we, we decided to go with what the books say. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then we are not saying they directly led to Botswana's independence, but their role. You know what I mean? and massively. Country, yes. Mm. So we are like, you know what? These are key people that we need to celebrate. Mm. And then we did the three Dokosi edition. Mm-hmm. It is not the only edition that we will do, but when we started in 2018, pe- in 2018, 25th October, mm. people picked it up and really liked that. And then you're like, you know what? When 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 something works for you, because people mm. still want to. Babi said the t-shirt, the sweater, 
the course you want to do is watch the course you know mm. what i mean yeah so uh, that started and then mm. we we're like you know what this story is actually central to the brand and it's still mm. working for us so that's why uh we did that and i did mention earlier that the brand is human centered at the end of the day we put people at the center of our um, brand that is why watch heritage is a part of it and you can't talk about heritage and leave people out of it not only are we going to talk about people uh, we do celebrate the ones that are leaving that's why we have round table uh, discussions and fireside chats with um with with locals you know mm. what i mean mm-hmm. by now who we are telling um, stories of Botswana and the things that Botswana are doing mm. to the world right you, you still I'm sorry really about ex- that ex- explaining horology and, mm. and tying it up to the, the, the three chiefs yeah i was saying um you know that boils down to our brand philosophy what our philosophy we envision to mm-hmm. merge uh, Botswana's heritage with modern horology Mm. And then, yeah, no, heritage, you obviously, when you talk about heritage, you cannot leave people out. And then Brenda Barona is human-centered. We, peop- we, we put people at the center. And then we tell our stories. We s- celebrate our significance yeah. mm. and achievements. You know what I mean? And the reason why we did that, I'll, I'll tell you what. In these days and times, what really sells is not the product itself per se, but the story. Storytelling is key, mm. and then Rona visual storytelling is at the center of what we do. Go, yeah. go, go, go now. Okay, mm. uh, the inauguration of His Excellency, yeah, um, President Mukwege Eric Masisi took yeah. place in 2018. Yeah, and you have some thoughts about how, because I see that you appear in advertising, some of your advertising here appears in it. Tell yeah. us about that event and how it. Uh, played out in your in your you know strategy especially your marketing strategy i'd say it boils down to people like i was saying and then you'd find that he did mention um if i remember well in his about speech in his speech that we really are lucky to have forefathers and founders of this country who who actually uh, you know did things in a certain way mm. and then Sam and part of those people, one of the three chiefs that we are talking about, mm. in the same speech, if I remember well, he spoke about poverty and unemployment. Mm-hmm. You know, part of what we're doing. I was saying employment creation is part of seeing what last year. When COVID came, yes. and then they disrupted a lot of things. Disrupted quite a lot of things. Mm. He did. He even had stats of um, unemployment, especially of the youth, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So design and, uh, you know, creative arts, well, they have always been there, but in this side of the world, it's more like emerging sectors mm. of the economy. Mm-hmm. And then obviously to seek employment, to, to create employment opportunities, we need to look at these erupting and these newly surfacing um, sectors of the economy, mm. inclusive of creative arts and design. Okay, yeah. so, 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 so that inspired yeah uh, you to actually approach him or what um part of it yeah um because that's what we discussed when we got to his office mm-hmm. our d- discussion was actually based on that and obviously gonna this works canelano mm-hmm. he's at a leadership level policy level they will draft these put them in place but he's not the person who's actually going execute, to, do, yeah. to execute. Mm-hmm. So obviously, also on the lake correlation and then now alignment with the people that are on the ground mm-hmm. to actually drive. Especially with regard to the national transformation yes, strategy. to drive these um, objectives. Yeah. You know what I mean? So can I lay everybody on the ground? Every entrepreneur mm-hmm. should actually look at these reports, the national development planning, the industrial development yeah. training. Transformation strategies, beneficiation strategies, that their money, yeah. all of those things. Are now, okay, fine. which is what I made mention mm. of earlier. Hore, but the hard level to ana with our country being a diamond producer, carrying nine miles. What am I saying? You know, yeah. what's my role? What's my little two cents there in mm. my little corner? Which takes me to to your know, another national transformation strategy. Mm. Uh, recently, he's been talking about the reset. Yeah. You as Narco Time Pieces, uh, mm. what what are your thoughts on both these, uh, you know, policies on, and concepts? Yeah, I think those are beautiful because it's it's all for me the way I understood it. It's pretty much about mental attitude. 
Mm. Eh, our ways of thinking and our traditional ways of thinking really need to change because now we can't survive that way. Mm. We live in days and times that need new type of thinking. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We really need to be a bit fluid at, 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 at mind and mm. creative, divergent mm. at uh, some point and start to look at the world uh, differently. Our outlook to life mm. has to change and then that has to come through auditing obviously the self like it yeah. and, and and a personal analysis to see what I may what I may I know how am I in my little corner going to to make things better yeah. for my country which yeah. which which I think it's a very good thing because we, we I mean we can't adopt olden ways and olden models of thinking you know what I mean in these days and times mm. we really can't mm. we can only survive if we change the way we think, yes. our outlook to life, I mm. and then the way we do business. Yeah. Because the traditional models, mm. I mean, the world and globalization have run those things redundant. Yeah. Well, HE is not the only prominent person appearing in your marketing material. Yeah. I see the likes of Common, yeah. and I'm sure there are other celebrities. Yeah. What is the deal with uh, Nago Time pieces and celebrities? It still goes back to our philosophy that connects what we do to people. We can be selling watches at a product level, mm -hmm. but over and beyond that, we want to celebrate the achievements and the stories and the people. And then if you look at Brand Nako, as it, well, yes, it's a Botswana brand founded in Botswana, but a lot of times go by extension Africa. Mm -hmm. Because as much as we're within Botswana, yes, we're an African brand. Yes, you know what I mean. Mm. So those are things that we do these roundtable discussions and fireside chats with these people. You want in or part of it? Any like brand awareness from our end, mm. brand awareness and getting our brand. And these sort of the like people. influencers you pay to appear. Like uh, I'm interested in the one with Common because I've mm. seen seen it even recently. You know, interesting enough about that man. He'll tell you things about Botswana that you don't know yourself mm -hmm. when you come from this country. Really? Yes, that's how solid he is. Mm. Yeah, because he's a conscious rapper. He's, um, he's, I mean, he comes a long way. Common was there in the 70s. Mm. And uh, he, that was when rap and music was meant to change lives. That was, you know, art that was meant to drive, mm -hmm. you know, certain, um, you know, change. In, in, in humanity and add value to the capacity of the people. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say as much as he's is one of my favorite um, artists, I just reached out and then told him I'm from Botswana and they were like, you know what, just come to my show. And then we spent pretty much the whole day and the evening until mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah. So we were talking about Botswana, citing songs that where he, where he spoke about Botswana and stuff like that. And, and I would say to us that was, the mileage was big. Yeah, in terms of not only here but even in America, mm. and you know, is what? he a brand ambassador, ambassador for Nago Time Pieces now? No, 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 he's not no. A, a brand ambassador. Maybe, just maybe not, not formally. Eh, not formally, but we have plans. We are working on something mm. that is still uh, Mopoto mm -hmm. with, with, with him because now your recent appearance with him, I think, mm. is it a month or two ago? What was going on? Hey, so that basically that was a picture that was taken it was the last year or something like that oh i see uh, yeah he was launching his let love um album and then Lerona were and then he came to the uk mm. so we met him there and then we just had this chat about okay. our brand and what we we're trying to do and obviously like i was saying kind of when you start um you have objectives mm -hmm. that our objective when we started in the brand awareness mm -hmm. people have to know about this brand globally and consistently repeatedly we'll be taking out messages uh, to make sure that yeah. there's a message and then later that will build loyalty if you're consistent mm. and the products are good true you consistency I mean? is key yes and in terms of size um, how big is Nago Time Pieces how many employees yeah. um, market capitalization if you are willing yeah. to tell us yeah. how is it doing overall <laughs> It's, it's doing quite good. It's, mm. it's, it's doing quite good because, like I was saying, we have products that we design and manufacture, mm. we sell for ourselves. So, it's not going to selling all over the world. We ship all over the world. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, 
you know, corporate like orders, you know. Yes, yes. You have people who would buy it when they have more people come, but we want fifty of these, we want seventy, mm. well, we want five hundred, come so we want six thousand units, come mm. so we want the ten thousand units, come wow. so you know what I mean. So yeah. Mm. So it's um it's that in terms of um the returns on design investment, we're actually quite um good and uh I would say yeah. Hopefully I'm profitable. Not, I'm, not com- I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. I see you won't mention <laughs> the numbers, but I understand why. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about this book, Heritage mm-hmm. Volume Five. What's going on here? So basically, this is a book that we are featured in, and then the first one was the. This was Volume um, Volume uh, Four, and that's Volume Five. Mm. So it's a coffee table book. Um, mm-hmm. You know, started by locals, and I actually quite like it because you see all of the drama in mm-hmm. it in terms of you know like different sectors of the economy and then we this volume was when we launched the classics mm-hmm. when this volume was published and then that one is when we launched the, um, the slim lines okay yeah so basically we don't have a publication of ourselves that will say that tells you the entire story mm-hmm. we do have our brand prospectus that we give to prospective uh, investors and stuff like that mm. but now <coughs> I carry this with me because I mean Lebo and Hapehela this is where we, we, we actually meet and merge mm-hmm. in heritage because the book itself our heritage Botswana mm-hmm. and heritage Dorna it's a keyword it's in a keyword in, 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 in what we do yeah. so yeah and then those are very uh, interesting articles Mm. Uh, that they wrote about us in, mm-hmm. in the two in the two versions. We okay. only appear in these two versions. Where does one find this? Uh, there are contact details in there. In oh, okay. The, yeah, yeah. I thought for the benefit of the viewer, yeah. you might say where they. Yeah. Or just maybe because uh, I don't think I don't. I'm not sure, but I don't think they they sell them because you pay for space, mm-hmm. and then how do you get a couple? And then okay, Bonana from their uh, warehouse. I'm not sure about sales, okay. but I ca- I think people can get them. Yeah. All right. And how how are Botswana responding to the idea of, mm. of wearing a watch? Because even me, it took me a while <coughs> to get a watch because I thought yeah, I yeah. can get the time from my phone. From my, yeah, I'd say first things first. Like I, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a culture, mm. you know, that needs to be cultivated. And another thing, it's 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 not only function but aesthetics. Mm-hmm. Aesthetics and accessorizing over function. Mm-hmm. From the phone, yes, you can tell the time. You know, the smart watches. Um, and then I do get those comments yeah, mm-hmm. a lot. Or, ah, you know, you know, as much as I want to support you, I have my Apple Watch, and because I jog, and mm-hmm. I, I mean, but you know, if you are you underst- if you understand the culture of watches, you can't mm-hmm. replace mm-hmm. Uh, a Rolex with an Apple with an Apple Watch. Mm-hmm. No, not now, not ever. Doesn't make sense. Not now, not ever. <laughs> yeah. You have to understand to yeah to to you know what I mean. You yeah. can and you have to have both of them because how to have your whole fashion ensemble in there. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, if you're looking uh, 10 years, 15, 20 years ahead mm. for Nago time pieces and for yourself, mm. what does your crystal ball tell you? Uh, basically, um, our short term mm. strategy starting 2022 is to go global. If you would go back in time in terms of um, communications um, and advertising, marketing, everything has been persona this, persona that. Mm. So now, yes, the brand will be inspired and it's a homegrown brand, but now we want to actually now diverge and go to Africa and the world. And then we're already in in London, you're already in New York, you're already in Geneva. Yeah, as as, as a a Botswana brand, Mm. you understand. But now the perspective is actually to have a strategy that sort of places Nako as an African brand. Mm Do you know what I mean? Country branding is important, but I'll be honest with you. What it did, it made Botswana proud. Only two million people proud. Two and a half. Eh? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. And those are not big numbers. Mm. And then people who identify with Botswana, who like Botswana, or in the diaspora about Botswana, had to buy. But now there were people say, living in the near ring, um, South Africa. Mm. Um, well, they can buy because it's a product from Botswana, but you see it's specific. Country branding makes it specific to this country. Mm-hmm. Even African countries sitting where they mm-hmm. would like it because Botswana is African, but it doesn't really, really, really align mm-hmm. with where they're from. And then before we came up with the strategy that we have now, 
we wanted to go different countries, but because we have mm. go South Africa Incorporated Feb 2019, mm-hmm. and we were like, you know what, we can't really going be going country to country. Uh, doing country branding, we now need to be inclusive. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because because now if we grow and look at a larger picture and perspective of the entire in the bigger Africa, it's not only Botswana mm. of two and a half. Is this know? where maybe AFTA comes into play? Africa okay. Continental Trade Agreement. Yeah, because what we're doing, Kerari, we want. I mean, we have how many countries in our fifty? 54 54 kingdoms okay Mm. so now if this is an african brand obviously the entire 54 kingdoms will feel proud Mm. for this belongs to us what we have seen and what what sold our products over and beyond story it's 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 how we placed the br- the brand one or Harry Dirle Botswana. Mm. Botswana felt proud. Yes. Even yes. even I mean from presidents to office of the former mm. president to everybody who has ever bought mm-hmm. you watch it mm. Really we didn't really matter much for yeah. it's, it's 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 the story and the product or it's homegrown, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah no, may that homegrown has only been limited to Botswana. Of which we want to now go into other places because we have um, business opportunities uh, mm. coming in South Africa, in Angola, in Malawi, mm. and even in the, in, in, in the West, because um, especially in America, you, you have um, uh, people in the States who are really solid, not only about Botswana, but Africa. Because mm. you see, if you come from the, the motherland, you are, yes, yes. You are <laughs> the one. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. Hey, I'm with yeah, you. No, now we need to 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 to, to so grow. you foresee opening branches or just sit basically being accessible to a, um, another market in the diaspora or you mm. thinking of opening branches or what we we, we we will because in these four places like i don't know we this where we have these offices mm. so really yeah, Hamurone, in, Joburg, Joburg, in new york and london new york and london hey, then geneva not geneva is just manufacturing hey, it's just manufacturing mm. um right now can i already Nako Botswana, mm. I guess incorporated in Botswana. Mm. So the South African one, it's Nako South Africa. It's a totally different sister company there. Mm. So we're planning on, you know, doing the same. You know what? Yeah. To get the especially that the people by Longhorn now will be partnering with mm. actually citizens of yeah. uh, those countries. And if Hombeno, we incorporate that in the United States, uh, mm. partnering with an American, yeah. obviously there are benefits. You know, Hore, yeah. uh, you know it comes with, 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 but with what that. do you say to those entrepreneurs out there who are fearful mm. of expansion? I mean, you've been playing in, in mm. three or four continents for mm. many, many years, yeah. two, three decades. Yeah. What do you say to those people who are I tend to to be just sort of insular and looking into Botswana in a smaller market. I think it's very important to be a citizen of the world. You know what I mean? That's uh, what is very important. And um, again, people should not fear because there's really nothing to fear out there. Ghana, mm. when you, like Rona, when we're doing these watches, these are the best watches No. Mm. This is the little that we can offer. If you're passionate about something and you're doing something, you're taking it out to the world, you are sharing with the world. So mm. it's not like you're sticking your chest out mm. to say, I went and did that. No. You know what I mean? Sometimes, mm. like and yeah, travel a lot, leave your country, leave your motherland, mm. spend time elsewhere. Because it's a Mm. Yeah. It's, it's really problematic mm. you know what I mean you because, because you, you countries that don't even exist mm. you know what I mean and Mehra now what I know um, Botswana and Botswana are very special whether mm. you go to South Africa or you go to the United States there are a whole lot of people who yes are making money but Botswana are educated mm. you see I put education first because money with no story mm. I'm not that type of guy yeah, yeah. you know what I mean mm. and then there has to be a certain purpose something that drives you over and beyond mm. um, profit making yes. so you're going to find where this country has educated its people where they stand a chance to actually make it mm. outside the world because people mm. some even in South Africa some didn't even get mm. education you know, or free education that Botswana got yeah, yeah. so you can survive undercut mm. the deals and stuff like that yeah. but you know 
Botswana are very, very, and very like special. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Unless we say about that, the better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it's like I was saying, they should fear nothing. Yes. The most important thing is self-belief. Yes. There's nothing as beautiful as self-belief. Like they say, believe in the self and everything and everything will be possible because the world is your oyster. There's no one in the middle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is the right order of things. Of things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, can, yeah. you, can, you can admire people's works and stuff like that. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to um, sort of... Um, dance to that tune. To, to, to dance to that tune or feel there are any... Um, mm. You know what I mean? No, I appreciate that. Yeah. You can ask me a question, sir. This is your chance. Mm. I'd say uh, what I'd like to know is um, you are one of the... Um, you know, one of Botswana's renowned entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. and you come a long way in entrepreneurship. And um, it's uh, not as easy to be an entrepreneur in this country. And you've, Kure, uh, you survived the test of time and competition mm-hmm. to date. We are not looking at five years ago, or ten years ago. You've been in in, in, in in you know in this industry for, decades, yeah. for yeah for 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 a very long time mm. and then you know this goes beyond academic credentials and knowledge um to to experience what i want to know now with the years that you've accumulated we're talking wisdom mm. so mm. what's the wisdom you would leave to other fellow Botswana, to me as well mm. because um um we no, it's still a work in progress. Mm-hmm. We are still t- struggling to, to find it. And I don't think there's any one person who has uh, mastered it all. Yeah. I think the, uh, the attitude should always be one of perseverance and persistence mm-hmm. and see how it unfolds. Um, I have uh, come very close to giving up mm. when things were really rough many, many times. Mm. But I think looking back, because you only know things looking back. Yeah, yeah. The key thing was never to give up when things really looked terrible. Mm. You know, that bank manager wasn't so sympathetic. Mm. That, um, you know, customer ran away with the money. Mm. That person uh, betrayed you. So and so has not delivered on their promises. Mm. The key thing is when those moments come, Mm. to just persevere and soldier on because Mm. you have um, a bigger purpose. Mm. You know, Mm. our purpose is to to really uh, inspire, energize, enthuse, and empower others. Mm. So if we can still do that, mm. if there's still a possibility, there's energy, there's breath in our bodies, mm. doesn't matter what setbacks we have. So to me, that is the biggest thinking. And if you go to um, my religious faith, if you go to mm. my Sutana upbringing, go mm. um, this notion of, of not mm. giving up mm. was ingrained early. And I think it's the difference that mm. made the difference. Mm-hmm. It's really what counted the most. Mm-hmm. So, uh, some of what you've been saying, mm. you had this vision that you've had yeah. uh, two decades ago, mm. which you implemented a decade ago, mm. and you hung on it, you executed mm. 2018, mm. and look what you're doing. Mm. I mean, and you, you traversed three or four mm. uh, continents. Mm. I can learn a lot from someone like you. Yeah. And I think this conversation should carry on even after this true yeah what, what, what i like and what i picked correct me if i'm wrong it's um it goes back to mental attitude and personality yeah yeah in short i mean if i sum yeah. that up yes you are talking about a certain attitude mm. that you need to 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 to, to really have to, to 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 and 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 so they say um success really is a measure of perseverance. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. a measure of talent or skill or absolutely, whatever. No, no. Absolutely. So basically, successful people are strong people. Mm. People that stood um, the test of time and competition mm. and against all odds. Mm. You know what I mean? Whatever, yes. When things don't work your way or they work against you, it's you still, still rise. Up. You know what I mean? And mm. it's not um, you know, the, the number of times you fall, but the number of times you, you rise, you, f- you fall... Uh, face See up. that camera say we are we're right. running out of time and thank you for summarizing so beautifully. Yeah. Um, leave that viewer with 
a word of inspiration and motivation and also at the end tell them where they can get a watch and mm -hmm. interact with you further yeah. give you, leave your contacts yes basically um go uh Nako time pieces we have our products from the warehouse we are selling also um, white label fragrances um in in river walk we have our watches in monsieur collections in uh, airport uh, junction and what i'd like to say to 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 viewers out there young and old uh you know uh, Botswana, my countryman is that just just believe in yourself whatever you are passionate about whatever you want to do put it in place put aside the doubts put aside uh the fears because there's nothing that beats self-belief and just know that the first step you know the job is half done thank you okay and do you on social media how do they reach you or yeah basically on social media we have uh, Nako time pieces on facebook Nako time pieces instagram Nako time pieces linkedin and twitter all right thank mm. you very much you've been a great guest you've yes. done a wonderful job yeah. thank you thank you so much all right.